We're live. We are? This is live. It didn't even do a thumbnail. Well, because people are watching. You could put a thumbnail on later. Oh, okay. Here we go. Um, Hi, everybody. This is my <laughs> thumbnail. This is two thumbnail, four thumbnails in this video. Right? Okay, are we doing... We thought we'd be able to set up the camera before this went live, but apparently not. But that's what happens when it's live. Anything can happen. That's right. Hi, welcome. I'm Andy, and we are Andy Makes Movies, and I'm here with Josh Sussman. That's Act correct. Actor, entertainer, what else we got for you? Joyologist. Joyologist. Yeah, explain that. Uh, what is your interpretation? What do you, what do you guess? Table over here? We're, we're not prepared for this. Sorry. It's kind of spontaneous for us today. Because it's live. Because we're going live. Oh, hello, River. How are you? So does that, does that mean there's three people? Is that what that number? Yes, we got three people. Oh, just, it's less than a minute, and there's already three people. <laughs> is that good? I'm impressed. So here, we're going to talk uh, to you actors out there today, and anybody else who wants to know about kind of the process. And Josh, you've been through it. You're, uh, you've are you been on Glee, right? Yes, you've been on the Wizards of Waverly Place. Which you can see both of those on Disney+. Plus. Yeah, so they just... Uh, Started to show them yesterday, right? Well, Wizards has been on Disney Plus since they were born on November 12, 2019. But Glee just joined Disney Plus June 1st, 2022. All right. So uh, what's it like? I mean, when did you guys shoot those? Um, uh, shoot, that sounds like... Uh, oh. There's no shootings on set. Well, I guess filming. <laughs> it's so crazy with the language. <laughs> you want to be sensitive to everyone. And you it's do. Like, you do have to be sensitive. Well, all right. So <laughs> before we get that. Uh, let's first say that you have your own YouTube channel, your own TikTok, your own Instagram. I'll put links down below. Thanks. Uh, you want to tell them how to find you? Oh, yeah. Usually you do that for the end, but we're going to the beginning. We're going to do it right in the beginning so people know. I didn't win them over yet. Okay. okay. Oh, you know what? Don't tell them later. But I'll tell you one of them, my TikTok. Because then they'll be like, ooh, what if they go to my TikTok and they leave the live, right? I don't. Oh, that's to... true. So don't tell them. Yeah. I, you have to stay till the end to find that stuff out. Okay, so we'll do that at the end. Anyway, in the meantime, you can like and subscribe on my channel here. Make sure you comment and do ring the little bell and stuff. So you comment, like Jessica Mendoza. Um, happy Pride Month to you as well. Yes, Jessica. Hello, hello. Thanks for joining us. So, Josh, let's talk about uh, being an actor. I love it. And being an actor in Hollywood here. There's uh, no business like it. No business I know. That's true. I've had no business either lately. Oh, no, what are you talking about? That's it's, not true. It's a joke. It's oh, a joke. okay. He's very successful. <laughs> and he's on a YouTube show yeah. with dinosaurs. Oh, I haven't told him that. Oh, should I have not? A, did I break nope. this breaking news? You're not breaking, breaking news. No, this is driving me nuts. Okay. What's driving me Well, so let's talk. Camera. Let's okay. talk about where you're from originally. Okay. Uh, I was born as a youth in New Jersey. Okay. Um, and... Should I give him my address? I I'm not give him my address. Do they still live there? Yeah, my parents are still up. Oh, yeah. So, no, okay. No, I don't. Okay, yeah. So, I was born in New Jersey. I started off as a kid, um, like going to school and all that stuff. When did you decide you wanted to be an actor? Um, it was right before my fifth birthday party. Um, my, before my fifth birthday party, my mom had asked me who I wanted to invite to my birthday party. And usually, you should expect all the other kids in the pre-K class. And I, I don't want to invite all of them. But <laughs> I started mentioning, like, Gonzo and Fozzie and Kermit. Oh, um, Kermit. Yeah. And my mom explained to me that we can't invite them. They live in the television. And that's actually what created my interest in becoming an actor. And it's not even that I wanted to act. I was like, I need to figure out how to get inside that television. Um... So you could play with the Muppets. And that has not happened yet, but I you did get inside the TV. I actually got inside the television. <laughs> you did. You also came close. Can we talk about your little near miss with the Muppets? No, no, there's no... no we can't? No, no, there's no near... <laughs> I, I put it out there that I want to work with them. I, I auditioned. Before, I got an opportunity to audition for something Muppet-related, but... Uh, it's open now. They they released the info. Like I that. know, but I don't. Want, okay, I'll, I'll tell everyone. Let's start. No, that's a I, big deal. I'd be telling everybody. Uh, no, I, we don't talk. I guess now I feel like am I one of those people when they say social media is fake and people just promote their best stuff and like I don't want to. I guess talk about the 
The things you didn't get. The things you don't get. Normally you don't. But so a lot of a lot but, of artists and a lot of actors would want to hear that kind of stuff that want to encourage them and let them know that they're not alone and it's not easy, right? Okay, so I will yes, okay, I'll share those stories. And Tanya's here. Hi Tanya. Hi Tanya. Um uh, yes, I made it into the television, but making it into the television is not easy because there is and this is true with anything in life, there is a lot of rejection. Um right. A lot of rejection and as an actor you're unemployed after every job and so no i did so and i finally got the chance to audition for something that the Muppets were going to be in that's the coolest thing in the world um and i do believe it'll happen one day it just has not happened yet um oh it never asks do you enjoy theater acting or film acting well, I started off as a theater actor in New Jersey. I did community theater, and I was involved in a teen performing arts company. And I used to do maybe like two to three plays a year. And uh, I think, yeah, I loved it. So, do you recommend that if if somebody wants to be an actor to and they're not in Hollywood to do local theater? Absolutely. So, to anyone who wants to be an actor, or people who sometimes write to me and ask how to get into it, that's always my advice. There's theater everywhere. And it's it's not something that pays, like there's often the community theater and other things. And just get involved in that. And it's not only it's a great experience and you you know, it could does add to your resume, but it's just so fun. I got to do some great plays, like the works of Neil Simon. Like I got so to- how does that compare to today where kids are, they don't have to do theater? They can literally get on TikTok, they could get on YouTube, they could get on Instagram, they could start creating content and put it out there and even build an audience maybe bigger than a lot of people. We'll see if you're in mm-hmm. a TV show. But that's that's true. It's really that's an interesting conversation because that's also advice I give to people. Like when they ask how to get into it, I think, well, social media is something that didn't exist. Like when I started, and like I think there's casting and agents, people who look at your following. But I think as far as becoming a seasoned actor, I don't know if. Well, no, I was going to say I don't know if people who are doing TikToks are getting the same experience as someone doing theater and putting up plays, but. They're actually mini directors, and they are be, make produce writing, producing, directing, and starring in their own movies. So I actually don't want to um, dismiss anyone doing social media. So I think it's very different, and I think that goes into the reality world. Maybe I, I feel when I look at you, then you just see the side of my face, and I realize you got a great profile. It's okay. A great profile. Well, thank you. <laughs> That's very. He says nice things. He boosts me up. He, like, he, that's what friends are. That's what friends do. And we met just walking on the street initially. Oh, right. Tell me the story. <laughs> so, as we were walking down the street, and I all oh, it's what, what happened, and okay. he liked my hair. Yeah, I did. So this is just kind of a wacky story. I do a lot of Three Stooges related content, and we were looking for a Larry. I don't know if you know the Three Stooges. But uh, Larry's got very similar hair to Josh. And I was literally talking to a friend of mine. It's just like, you know what the biggest problem is? You can't find anybody who looks like Larry. Nobody's just walking around the street looking like Larry. And then all of a sudden, Josh literally walks right by. And I'm just like, oh, excuse me. And I stopped you. We talked for like 20 minutes. And you weren't a super fan of the Three Stooges, but you, you knew them. And uh, we didn't really you – gave, you gave me your card. Right, which had go-go fraggle on it, which I was completely amused by. And uh, I was hoping that you would be our Larry one day. And you still have not become our Larry. I, well, not yet. Not yet. We're but, working on it. Before responding to that, Tanya said that sometimes she likes to do acting duets on TikTok, which I have seen. And I think that's also great. There's so many people who do half of one scene on TikTok. And then you could, other people could just fill it in and, like act along. So even if you weren't able to audition for a play, or even if you weren't able to have an acting class to go to, there's so much on TikTok where you could just do you know how to do that? Yeah. Are you familiar? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. So that's cool. So oh, I saw that <laughs> in my periphery. <laughs> River does theater in is River is do I say her hometown? Is River a boy? River always is theater in hometown school and TikTok, YouTube, and much more. Keep it going, River. Yes. Uh, and one day you will be an ocean. So when did you, how old were you when you decided that you were going to come to LA and when did you actually come? Okay. Um, I came to, I decided, you know, this is crazy. I, I read a interview with Dakota Fanning, I think, 
um, in November about how I think she came out to LA for pilot season in January. And I was thinking, huh, coming out to LA for pilot season in January sounds interesting. So I read this article in November, at, I think it was October, but then by January, I was a resident. Um, what year was this? This was, The year was 2005. Um, I drove across the country um, from New Jersey to here with a suitcase and a dream. I would have used a car. Oh, no, I took an automobile. Oh. Yeah. And what did your parents say when you're like, Mom, Dad, I'm going to go to L.A. to be a star? They, my parents have always been so supportive. And like, if I, when I would do plays, they would come to every single performance. And they've always been very supportive. We didn't know if this was going to be a six-month journey, if I was going to just come out for six, three months, six months, or what it was. Uh, when I left, I drove across the country with my dad. And my mom was crying. Um, <laughs> because... Even though a few months earlier she was even suggesting maybe I get my own place or I move out, but I guess it's, uh, it's you know when your little boys moving out. Wait, how old were you? I was twenty years old. Okay. But I, in the middle of this journey, I before getting to California, um, I turned twenty-one. So of course I timed this cross-country drive to wind up in Las Vegas on my twenty-first birthday. Now, so my birthday is December 30th. I get to Las Vegas the night of the 29th. I go into the casino, it's at 9 p.m. And I have a New Jersey driver's license and I figure it's obvious because it's three hours earlier. I'm already 21. This is going to be no problem. The bouncers. <laughs> you're like, no. You have to be 21 in <laughs> Vegas. And it was like, oh, no, 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 no. You see, look, here's my New Jersey um, driver's license. Um, it's after midnight. That's where I was born. I'm already, I'm a 21 year old person. Well, you were. This is a good question. First of all, Jessica was two years old in 2000. Oh, before she was born, 2005, two years before she was born in River City. Did you get scared of being typecast? Yeah, do you, do you think you play a lot of the same parts? Um, I know I always play a lot of like really cool guys and suave gentlemen who are, that are dashing and heroic. Do I get tired of it? No. Um, you know, people warn and talk about typecasting. and But you know what word is in typecasting? Type. Casting. Cast. Cast. And you want to be cast. Um, so one of... That reminds me of, uh, do you know Fred Stoller? Of is? course I know Fred right, so Stoller. Guys, I was just texting with Fred Stoller. Oh, it's so And I also bought, uh, downloaded his audio book, which I love his books. Did he ever tell you a story? So Fred Stoller, look him up. He's a great character actor, super funny. And he actually responded to an audition that was Fred Stoller type, was literally in the uh, audition mm -hmm. description. And he went and he didn't book it. He's like, I'm, nobody's going to be more the Fred Stoller type than me. That's crazy. So that hasn't but didn't get it. happened to me as far as I know. But I met Fred on Wizards of Waverly Place, and that's where we became oh, okay. friends. Um, but typecast. No, so I, some, I often will play nerdy types. But I, they're, they're different kinds of nerds. Like when I was on Drake and Josh, I talked like this guy, you know, the, 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 the speech of kind of winter, I was really into science. And... Was that your idea? Um, no. Originally, it was a, a very small part where it was just mumbling. And they, so I had no words. And I was just mumbling. I don't know if I've told this before, but the executive producer thought I sounded mentally challenged so he thought he should give me words wait in real life in with the, in, in my mumbling voice oh okay in my mumbling voice so i'm drake and josh which i don't think you've ever seen it but <laughs> no. and a lot of people don't know what i'm saying but i'm doing uh i'm drake's science partner where i'm telling him you mix the stuff with the stuff and you mix the stuff but it sounds like this. Are you mix the stuff with the stuff? Are you mix the stuff? And then he tells me, "I'm just trying to do my experiment." And uh, and I or he whatever, whatever he says, he says, "I don't know what you're saying." And I say, "I'm just trying to do my experiment and not hurt anybody." So mix the stuff. And it's like, "I'm just trying to do my experiment and not hurt anybody." So mix the stuff. But a lot of people think don't even know I'm mumbling. They're like, "Whoa!" If you turn on captions, you can actually see what he's <laughs> saying. Wait, how many episodes did you do on that show? Well, here's what's amazing. 
I've only done two episodes of Drake and Josh, and that's one of the three things I get recognized for most. Oh, it's a huge to this show, day. right? And it's, I think there were like 65 episodes, and like I'm learning from people, and I thank you for all the Drake and Josh fans. I, I guess they consider my character iconic. And like, there's a video here on YouTube, the same place you're watching this video, that has just all my scenes, and I think it's half a million views, and I read the comments, and it's all people love Clayton, and it's like, when I did that in 2006, why don't you just revive the character and make a little web series based on that character? Am I allowed to? What? Who's going to stop you? Um, I don't know. Nickelodeon? <laughs> or is it, I, you know, I've done, you know and, and then on TikTok, if I do that voice and I do Clayton, that gets so, it gets like half a million views and people are so happy to see it. But then, but then there's other people who say, ah, uh, you're just relying on the thing you did a long time ago. And it's like, you, and that gets in your head. No, you get, you can't. That's interesting you say that because we've had this conversation in private before. I say you can't think of those people. You got to ignore those people. And uh -huh. who cares about those people? Right? Uh -huh. But but it does get into your head. Huh? Yeah, because no, there is an element that. So if I do a video on social media and it's with Drake and Josh, Wizards of Waverly Place, or Glee, which seem to be those are out, of over, out of over, I think, 50 different acting jobs, maybe more. You know, those are the ones that people connect with and love. And if I post about those, and I love all three of those shows, and it's fun to post, but there is an element if that's all I posted about, it's like I also want to show that I'm not just that. So it's a danger. So I'm very lucky that I have that. But, you know, like if that's all I do, then there are certain people who become a career just of their past. And there's certain people that's like, I don't, you know, I want to show I'm doing, I'm doing more because other people are like, oh, you must not have anything else going on. So I try to create other things and do other, sometimes I tell jokes and other things would be like, oh, he's still funny. He's not just that. So and, let, let's, when you first come out here, you, you were 21. Yes. Did you have a plan? Did you know where you're going to live? Did you have an agent, a manager? What was your plan? Um, well, have you heard of Eminem? Uh, the candy? No. See, that's what that's where my mind would have went to. He's a successful um, musician, rapper. Yes. Which Eminem's come in a rapper. I just made that connection. <laughs> that's that's so funny that you it's guessed more the like a package. What do you okay. guys think? <laughs> do Eminem's come in a package or a rapper? Both are correct. Please. I say for forever Roche comes in rapper. A Roche? Yeah, it was a, the Ferrara Roche. <laughs> I don't know what those candies are. Uh, it's a, a rapper. rapper. Okay, Ben, ben fine. Ben Flo, thank you. And Ben Flo sounds like a rapper name. It does sound like that. Because rappers, they talk about their flow, right? Do they? Or is it? I don't know. Well, flow is also to be. Anyway, go ahead. Okay. Well, Eminem. <laughs> <laughs> he had this song called Lose Yourself, um, yeah. which I think won the Academy Award. And a, a friend wrote me a letter and he was like, I'm going to quote this Eminem song, Lose Yourself, where he, and he, he paraphrased, he cut out the bad language, which I'm going to do too. He said, success is your only option, failure's not. And so Eminem said, success is your only um, <laughs> option, failure's not. The, the MF curse. Um, okay. which that doesn't add anything to it. No. So now what's interesting about that, I came here without a backup plan. And I do wonder if that has, some people might view that as very irresponsible, um, but I think- Wait, so your plan was just to come out and be successful? Yes, <laughs> I, I wanted to come out and I originally, I uh, knocked on, I got a, it was something called the Ross Reports. Have you heard of that? Remember that? Uh, I know the name, yeah, but I don't know what that is. It was a, a companion to Backstage and it was a publication that had a list of all the agents and managers and, I looked at the ones that I thought had cool names and I just went to their office with my headshot, which is my picture and resume that talked about the theater I did in New Jersey. And I said, hi, I'm Josh. I just got here from New Jersey. You just walked right in. I just walked right in because I thought that's how it's done. And I did that to a bunch of offices. How many? Uh, I don't know, eight. Was that successful? No, <laughs> uh, I never heard back from any of them. Okay, well, how did they react to you walking in? 
Uh, well, usually you hand it to a, a, oh, to a secretary or, right. or someone. So it's it didn't go anywhere. Okay. Um, but I got, I was able, I was very fortunate to be able to get a manager early on. How? And who's still Did, my manager you guys today. you want to know how to get a manager, to get an agent? Okay, How'd so, you do it? So I don't know if this answer is going to be helpful, but I'll tell you. And I actually, I think it is a good answer, or it's hopefully helpful. Um, so I started with this team performing arts company when I was 15, and I would do two plays a year with this um, team performing arts company. And it was at a, like a family center and all these things that had all sorts of different activities. One time they had a carnival and they asked for volunteers. And I was like, oh, volunteer for the carnival. And um, actually, I didn't feel like doing it that day. And my mom reminded me, if you made a commitment, you have to follow through. <laughs> and then, so the commitment, I was helping doing carnival games with kids. And I was like, huh, I'm really good with kids. So I decided to get a job as a summer camp counselor. So, and I ended up working at summer camp for four years, which led to a lot of babysitting positions. And a lot, and as a counselor, I was the best counselor possible. Where a lot of the other kids or teenagers, their parents made them get a summer job. Mm. But I... You took it seriously. I took it very seriously. You and, have a work ethic. And I had a work ethic. And I, okay, so anyway, so because... I became the, the most popular and favorite babysitter. Anyway, I decide I want to move to Los Angeles to be an actor. And I was telling one of the families that I babysat for, and like, oh no, oh well, we actually um, we're family friends with someone in LA. Let us tell. So we're family friends with a manager. You're out here for acting. So I was like, okay, I'll call this person up. And so because you were good at your babysitting job, yes, and you impress these people, yes. Ah. And it's so with that goes, and I think the great thing about that story that is with any job, whether you are working in fast food, whether you are working a waiter, in, or waitress. a waiter or waitress. So being a babysitter, being a camp counselor, that was not my passion. That was not my dream job. But because I did the best possible job I could be and presented myself as the best Josh possible, that led me. Actually, so this family, they weren't friends with the manager. They had a brother-in-law in L.A. So I called the brother-in-law in L.A. And I, um, they, I called them up. And they're like, wait, you're Josh, the great babysitter. We heard great things about you. Oh, you're out here for acting? We're family friends with the manager. Let us introduce you. And that is the story of how I met my manager that I'm still with today since 2005. So how long after you got here did this happen? Um. Within uh, three weeks. All right, so within three weeks, you come out here, you get a manager. I did 14 commercials in my first year here. <laughs> that's it. Now, you realize that's not typical. Um, I. What year is this? 2000? 2005. Five, mm -hmm. 14 commercials. Okay. So, your man this manager got you those commercials? Um, my manager got me a commercial agent. Okay. And the commercial. And he was the. He saw my potential, and he's like, "You should be in commercials." So he introduced me to a commercial agent. But he did get me shows like Jake and Josh, Wizards of Waverly Place. Your manager got that. Yes. So Glee. he's a decent manager. He's a big manager. Well, he got me all those things. Glee, my most recent, Mr. Mayor. Do you, oh yeah. So we didn't talk about Mr. Mayor with Ted Danson and Holly Hunter, which just got canceled. Yes, it's recently can canceled. So meaning I'm available. Oh, what do you think? A lot of people <laughs> want to touch my hair when they meet me. How's well, I just saw your TikTok was, where somebody's touching your hair. How was the experience? I like it. It's exactly what I pictured. What you pictured? Yeah. What I pictured it would feel like. So, yeah. It just posted. So, oh, so, all right. So, 14 commercials. So, what, so, you're out here three weeks. You get a manager. You get your commercial agent. How quickly? Uh, that happened in March. But before that, I did a show on the E-Network with Tom Green, which was my very first audition. Um, <laughs> and you booked your very first audition. I was very fortunate. <laughs> I was, is that? Do, do I don't think that. No, it's not bragging. No, no. I think people want to hear this. So it can happen. But so you literally, it was a connection in New Jersey. From being a great babysitter. From being a great babysitter. Work ethic. Curly I was literally crazy. arguing with my friend about this last night. Okay, what's the argument? Well, because we knew we we were at a restaurant one night, and what's funny about this friend? I'll tell you about this friend. So it was my friend Jordan, and we were at this restaurant. It was Fred sixty two, and there was this waitress, and she was terrible. She was absolutely terrible, and I'm like.
this girl is terrible. Well, like, terrible. Like she did. She couldn't care less about our food. She didn't take. She didn't refill anything. She just food came late. It was cold, and her just attitude was just awful. I she, hate her. Yes. Well, so my feeling was, I said to my friend, um, "God, this girl's awful." And he's like, "No, you gotta have, you gotta have sympathy. She could just be having a bad day." And I'm like, "This is not a bad day. This oh. is this is someone." Who hates her job and is doing it poorly? And I'm like, if you're if you're in this town, you got to do your job well. Now, what's funny about this friend of mine is that I met him because he was my waiter, and he was a good waiter, and we became friends. Mm-hmm. And I ended up getting him into a couple movies, and we've done a lot of projects together. And so, like, you would think that he would have that same philosophy, and he kept defending this girl. And I was like, no, this. And so we ran into her. A, like, we got into an actual, like, argument about it. Like, where we're screaming at each other. A day and a half later, we're at a birthday party. And we ran into her. She was actually at this party. Did and she I, remember you? I, I don't know, but I remembered her. And so I went up to her. And I said, I got to talk to you. Because you, me and my friend got a big fight with you. Oh, you know? Wow. Uh, or fight, uh, we got into a fight. So you brought it out. I brought it out. And, wow. And I said, you were terrible. You are a terrible waitress. And she goes, I don't like that job. She goes, I, I don't care about that job at all. Right. And I was like, yeah, but it shows. And I'm like, and if you, you know, you steal little, you steal big. You're going to do a lousy job as a waitress. Mm-hmm. You're going to do a lousy job on a show because it's going to be a show that maybe you're not super proud of. And that, like that, I think that that attitude, that attitude is just like, you got to do the best. Yes. Job in whatever it is you do. Especially you're I mean, look, I would say especially in this town. More so for because her. you don't know who's gonna walk in there. Yeah. And say, I too, hey, I like your I like your work ethic. I want you to come work for me. What is, what else do you do or whatever? Well, do you think if like a big time recognizable producer walked in, she would turn it on? And she even though you are a big time writer producer, she doesn't know you. And I think Well that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's just like and so it's it's so funny that this happened and and it happened actually in New Jersey and, and a no, connection, and I, connection. And within a year, you're out here and you've done 14 commercials because of it. You're right. And I wasn't so like passionate about being a babysitter or being, that wasn't my thing, but I wanted to, if you're doing something, do the best job possible. I didn't know that would lead to success in that. So I don't know then if it's in karma, but there were other, of course there were hard days. And I was very annoyed at some of my co-counselors if they were having a bad day and they were lazy. And then I had a really, like we had a bunk at the kids, which was like 13 kids and oh, they're lazy or they're just on their phones where I'm having to, because they're slacking off. Right. And I'm thinking these parents of the kids, they're pre- I think they're paying maybe $3,500 for their kid to go to camp for the summer. They're paying a lot of money. So even if you're having a bad day, you have to be the best counselor possible. Right. And I think in any job, so there it worked out for me, but whether it's you're someone as a waitress or anything, and sure, people have rough days. One of my just things in life, about, and I, of course, everyone has stresses, and I have my bad days and stresses, but I can never imagine taking any of my stress or anger on someone else who had nothing to do with it. And I hate that excuse. Or if someone's kind of rude or mistreats you and then someone tells you, that, yeah, they're having a rough day. Okay, that's too bad. They're, yeah. I feel bad they're having a rough day, but I had nothing to do with that. Well, but <laughs> sorry, but sorry, also, for, you, you can tell this person wasn't having a bad day, that they just hated their job and just didn't want to do it. Didn't want to do it well. And so you knew that if they got into a show and they didn't love the show, they were going to do that job poorly too. Or they were going to, by the way, Curly's grandson. Popped in, say hi. Hi, everybody. Say hi to Curly's grandson. We did a great interview here on my channel. He called us uh, fellas. He said, hi, hi fellas. <laughs> I'm a fella. We were talking about the Three Stooges earlier, and that's uh, the grandson of the great Curly Howard of the Three Stooges, who we do a ton of stuff with. I do. One of my closest friends. And uh, hi, you pal. Um, so great. All right. So you got you got uh, 14 commercials. You just started booking. You got a bunch of shows that first year too. Drake and Josh was no, that year. Well, that was 2006. So the first year was all about the commercials, and it wasn't. Can I ask you what it pays? Um, yeah, sure. What does it pay? Okay. Um, for <laughs> which one? For the commercials? Yeah, typically. What is a, a was it union? Were you union at that point? Okay, so non-union? some of those commercials were non-union. Okay. And were you in the union? No, not yet. Okay. Um, but then when they became union, so typically uh, you get scale, which is the minimum that the union requires you to get. So it's just, 
it's always scale. And, but then once it airs on television, that's where you actually start seeing bucks. make your money. And I don't know how that works, but if they, I've heard different things that maybe for every time it airs on television, it could be three cents. Now, I have no idea if that's accurate, and I know like, we're thinking three cents, but sometimes commercial, if they air, I don't know, 100,000 times or 50,000 times, it could be. So what's the most you ever made on a commercial letter of the first year? Um, okay. You won't tell nobody. It's tough to say. Now, you don't get to keep all of it because, of course, the manager, the manager and the agent and taxes, but I think. But you don't live in taxes. You live in California. I know, which makes it confusing. <laughs> I, and there were, so it wasn't just one commercial, but I was in a campaign for Target, which had a Thanksgiving commercial, Christmas commercial, and New Year's commercial. Oh, so you were in three commercials just in that one campaign. Just in that one campaign. Though, of course, it has limited airtime, where I right. think the Thanksgiving one started on November 1st, and that really only aired from the beginning for like three weeks. Yeah. And then the other, after, right after Thanksgiving, the Christmas and New Year's one started. Right? And there's a famous band called Earth, Wind, and Fire. And they were in it. And I got to dance with them. That's pretty cool. In the commercial. Uh, so, so I got paid for the days I did that. And then, so you get paid the minimum for eight hours. What's the minimum? I think at the time, I think it made it like $600, <laughs> which you get for eight hours. But, and then after hours, so if you divide that by eight, you would find out the hourly, whatever that is hourly. But then hours nine and ten, you get time and a half. Oh, okay. And then after that, it's all double time. And I remember being on set for some 14-hour days. And there were, speaking of work ethic, there were people who wanted to go home. <laughs> and they were tired. <laughs> and I'm just thinking, this is great. I don't care. But then there's something. I've never experienced this, which is called golden time. And that's if you, after you reach 16 hours, where you start making your original eight hour rate every hour. So if you're getting $600 for eight hours. <laughs> oh, you're getting that for one hour. You're getting that for one hour. <laughs> so I've never, that's never happened. And I think that's some of the producer's job. They want to make sure. That doesn't happen. That doesn't happen. But there is something interesting on union sets. Also, whenever, if it's a multiple day commercial, my call time the next day would always be. 12 hours later because if it's less than 12 hours like if i if we don't finish till 10 o'clock p.m yeah they can't start before 10 or if they do they have to pay you a large penalty right which no one wants to so i think okay that's nice you could always get a nice Good amount of sleep. sleep but i remember one of the commercials like was five days in a row and that was my entire life during that time because they always were 12 plus hour days where you're doing that and you just you go home and you go to sleep and then you do it all over again, right? So you can't have any kind of life because it's thinking, I'm going to be on camera. I need to be well rested. I need to do this. I, but I, and that's not every day. So that's really. So give us a, give these guys a little advice about going in and auditioning for these things. I mean, you booked your very first audition, right? You said? Yes. For Tom Green's for show? Tom, for the, it, was, it was called My Crazy Life. Okay. Um, it was on, yeah, the E Network. And so that audition, I found out two hours before. And so if I wasn't around, I didn't check my phone. I wouldn't. So it's always, oh, yeah. and that's really, I think, stressful for me to, to this day. Like sometimes I'm like afraid to leave town because it's like when I auditioned for Glee, I only found out the night before that the auditions the next day. Imagine if I wasn't around. Um, How many auditions did you have to go through for Glee to get Glee? To get Glee, I went on two auditions. That's it. That's it. The first one, the callback, and then you booked it. Uh, right. Because it was Glee was I, originally just a one episode role. That was it. It was one episode. And what's interesting is that some people who, after having been on other shows, might be like, I've already been on Disney Channel, all these things. I don't need an audition for two lines on a TV show. Like They might think they're above that. But I don't wait, that's in a high school, like, I'm a high school student. If this goes well, even though it's too, it could be more. So I was hired for just one episode, and I think by, sh you show up early. What prepared. season was this? Season one. My first episode was the second episode. Okay, so I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Show up early. Yeah, yeah, you know, you show up early, yeah, you know, you're, you're polite, you're professional, you're prepared. Um, I remember just- Do you feel everybody's like that, or that you? Um, a great question. I think 
the people who are working when you're on set, I think are all, for the most part, take it seriously. But not all actors are like that. I remember I, having been at house parties and other things and people would talk about their audition the next day or they have other things. And I'm like, what are you doing at this party? Like I would, uh, I was so disciplined when I started out. I would be invited to parties and things and, and social things. But I, if I got an audition, it's like, no, that's why I'm out here. I'm not out here for the party. And I knew a girl also who wouldn't say, oh, you don't have to memorize your lines for the first audition, just for the callback. Just for the first audition, you could be reading from the paper. And I have heard that from some people, but no, for ever, I think for each audition, there could be over a hundred people auditioning for one part. They could only hire one person. So it's our job to give ourselves as many advantages as possible. Um, so maybe the people starting out there like, oh, I don't have to memorize, I have a script, I could just read it, I just got this yesterday. But I would always have all of my lines in here. How, That's my brain. What's your uh, process for learning lines? Repetition. Uh, you, you know, you read it again and again, you do it out loud and you try to make it conversational, you try to make it real. You do it by yourself? Um, you know, I did it a lot with my parents who were very supportive where I would send them my pages and we were just on the phone. Oh, really? Which is so nice. Um, so how long? Hour? 20 minutes? Two hours? It depends on the audition. If it's sometimes... Uh, they, I was so thankful. I just set an audition today, and I still went over lines with my dad on the phone. Um, I can we set up a time to, and it's just doing it out loud with someone else who's saying the lines is so helpful um, for me. Though if you don't, you know, I've had auditions where my parents weren't around, and I just you know it's other friends, you know, roommates. Um, you know, it does. It is helpful. I think if you just do it again and again, like your favorite movies. Like your favorite movies, you know the lines before the characters say them because you've seen it so many times. So it's that way. You just have to look at it this way and just again and again, and then eventually you know what you're supposed to say. So we got the other me asking, why do you like acting? Um, why do I like? Well, I just I just wanted to meet the Muppets, and I know they're in acting. I wanted to be colleagues with them. No, it's fun. I, you know, as a youth, I was bullied. I don't. No, if that surprises you. Oh, yeah, but I, I would have been afraid of you. You would have, why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> no reason. No reason. I'm sorry I asked. <laughs> I have a, you know, it was here, I want to tell you something, and you might think this is weird, and I don't know. So even though I got bullied, sometimes I actually allowed the bullies to bully me, or I would even set them up, or I would do something silly, which would allow them. But you know what? I was getting laughs. I was entertaining people. So even though they thought, ha, 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 I'm bullying you, I'm thinking internally. I'm saying, oh, well, ha, ha, I'm getting laughs. I'm um, getting to be an actor. I'm performing. So this is fine for me. This is... Do you remember these bullies? Yes. <laughs> Where are they today? I learned not to say. Oh, okay. Fine. I one time said something in one interview that's on YouTube, and I guess it seemed... Demeaning. I don't know. Well, they're because they're not successful like <laughs> I am now. So, Wait, so when you walk into an audition, how many Joshes are in that audition? You look in there and go, oh man, there's so many of me? Or are you like, I got this because there's nobody else like me in there? There's a lot of me. No there, way. There's, 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 okay, there's a lot of weird, eccentric looking people. First of all, going into an in person audition, that seems so. Now, so nostalgic for that because now auditions. Oh, you don't really do it anymore. You don't do them anymore because they're your self tape ever since. Uh, I know we're not social distanced, but auditions are social distanced. Uh, no, but I remember sometimes I would, especially commercial auditions, I would see people and I'm like, these people are all really socially awkward or social misfits. <laughs> and like, and wait, I'm in the same category as them. But I think I'm more socially with it than them. But you know what? I'll tell you the most demeaning commercial audition. It was it's for like weird guy or weird. And I was auditioning for a commercial where I was the guy who the girl swiped left on, meaning rejected you on this dating site. And there was, and I, I met this girl in the audition, and she was, and it's she was a nice girl. She was she's a successful girl. She's she's a comedian. I know who she is, and it's like. If ever I wanted to have a crush on her, like she's meeting me as you're the one we swipe left on, you're the reject. 
and going on those auditions, it's like eventually I was thinking, eventually I just would love to be able to do just film on TV and not have to do these kinds of commercial right. auditions. But then, but you know, commercials pay the bills, you gotta do them. Um, oh, Jessica loves the series Drake and Josh. So do I. But the, how do you say the oven? They have a message retracted? What did you, what was retracted? I don't know. What did you, do they retract it or does YouTube retract it? And they're like, I don't know, actually. I've never seen that before. Interesting. And it's gray and it's in parentheses. All right, so your advice for going in to audition, know your lines, give give yourself the best advantage that you can. Okay, so the best, yeah, the advantage is, I would tell people there's so many things that are out of our control, which is like, I might look like the producer's ex-boyfriend that they hated. So even if I'm like, oh, we don't like that guy. He reminds me of this. So, so those things are out of your control. So what is in your control? That you are prepared, that you know your lines, that you are early. Um, okay, when I first moved out here and I had an audition, I would actually show up to the audition a day early. No, I wasn't in the waiting room for a whole day, but I was new to LA and it's like, I don't know these streets, but if I get lost, so I would actually make, I would drive to every audition I had for my first year. Wow. I would go there the day, uh, early if it was a neighborhood I wasn't familiar with because sometimes, uh, you know, the streets, what if it's confusing? What if you don't, and I think that's the most anxiety you could ever have uh, to worry, expletive, I'm going to be late. I have this opportunity. I'm going to be late. And you know, there was one time on September 9th, 2009, I had an, I, I won't say what show it is, or maybe I will. Go ahead. I auditioned for Numbers, uh, a CBS show. And I was, I, there, was, there was a whole, it was at their studio in downtown LA. It was tough to get to. I had traffic. And then there was a whole parking structure, which is, um, so I was at the audition a little late. And the casting director told me uh, that I could go home. Now, I'm kind of gullible sometimes, and I, I, I've been in an ever-going journey to be less gullible and realize, oh, he's joking. Uh, so I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, I just laughed. Like, he wasn't joking. <laughs> he was, like, I was prepared because he was joking. Now, I probably would have been very depressed. Wait, really? He said, yo, how late were you? Okay, here's the thing. Um, I wasn't that late. So what happened was... Let's say my audition was two o'clock and I don't know, I'm walking to the studio. Let's say I get there at 205, but then they're going to have callbacks later that afternoon. Um, so I all the actors are there for callbacks. And I find, what's the guy from Seinfeld? Um, Bania. Um, so Bania was actually going to be the other character in the scene. He was auditioning also. And we were actually for a half hour just running lines because we were oh, opposite cool. characters for this. And... So instead of me maybe finding out where the casting director was at his office, I was like, oh, there's actors waiting around in here. So um, I probably should have just found the cast, but I was like, oh, there's actors. So I was waiting. So it was after half an hour. It's already there. Uh, and then the casting director said, oh, well, now it's the producer callbacks. I didn't get to pre-read you. I would have wanted to make sure you could audition. But, and I was like, I was here for half an hour. He sent me home. And I probably would have been very frustrated, upset about this. But the reason I remember that date is because that night was my first episode of Glee. That's when it first aired. The show shut up. The show was huge, which allowed me to not be depressed. Because it honestly, I thought it sucked and was unfair that he sent me home. And I was prepared. I was going over lines with the other actors. It was, and it was a small scene. It was probably like five lines. It was like a tiny part. But who was late? Who wasn't there half an hour early? Who? Oh. Me. Oh. I accept that. Right. So you did it. So I, I didn't do it because I, <laughs> what is, isn't that, is that terrible? No, it's, it's, like a, a, it's a good lesson. Yeah. But it never happened again. Yeah. No, it, you can't. Yeah, so, so the advantage you give yourself, I guess that's the most important thing. You don't want to be late because everything in film is so, I guess, expensive and like I earlier mentioned overtime. They don't want to pay people overtime. So if there's an actor who's five minutes late to the audition. They might think, huh, is he going to be, what if he's five minutes late to set? I feel like they might as well just they eliminate you right there. So the things that are in your control, yeah, you're early and you're prepared. And I think, I think being prepared is important and showing that you're taking it seriously. Um, did you see Rocky Balboa? 
Yeah, six. I love the speech he gives to his son, and I've always equated this to acting, where he tells his son, "It's not how hard you can hit; it's how hard you can get hit and keep getting up, keep moving okay. forward." Keep okay. So yes, no, it's how hard you can keep, keep moving forward. No, but he also says how hard you can get hit. Yeah. Okay, keep moving forward. Yeah. Now get it right, Josh. He's well, not prepared. He didn't know his lines. No, but I still use that philosophy. <laughs> As an actor, there's so much rejection. And what I noticed in my first few years here, people I met, different neighbors who were out here for acting, I went to a lot of going away parties. Um, mm -hmm. Meaning people who... Gave up. They gave up. The rejection is too much. And it's like Rocky said, I, so I get rejected for a living. So instead of getting knocked down, and sometimes it feels like a knockout. Um, you just have to... You know, keep moving forward. And I think keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. All right. Oh, Brett. Thank Brett said I was great. I was just Waverly Place. What did you play in Wizards of Waverly Place? You don't know. If you're not prepared, <laughs> you have a guest from Wizards of Waverly Place I'm, on your show. The whole point of, like, interviews like this is just, like, you meet somebody you don't know and you get to know them. So you're saying you don't know me. So I'm asking the questions that somebody would ask if they didn't know who you were. I was at the way really place. I played uh, a giant, wasn't really a giant, named Hugh Normus. So on the show, um, I came, so I was adopted um, by a family of giants. And so all my family are giants except me. How many episodes? Eight. And so I surround myself with miniature things so my self-esteem doesn't get through. So I always have like yeah. um, tiny cups of juice and tiny, tiny everything so that I can feel like... So when you, tell, when you go there... I was hired for just one episode also on that show. Oh, so tell me about that. I think they became eight. Because they liked you? Yes. Was it immediate or, or, or did the show go up and they, it performed well and they're like, let's do this again? Or well, like I wasn't, most of the show took place in the real world in New York. So my first two episodes were at this wizard school where the kids went to the special wizard school. Um, and in the first season, they only did two episodes in the wizard school. I was in both of those. So I did two episodes in the first season. And then so they go back to the wizard school. So then I'm, I'm in those. And they even brought me in for some episodes that were in the wizard school. So then I did four episodes in season two. No episodes in season three. I hated season three. But then I did two more episodes in season four. So do you ever improvise when you're doing your lines or you stick really close on television? Uh, good question. Sometimes, it depends on the show really. Um, I've had, usually you kind of stay very close to the lines, but sometimes you could try sneaking things in. And um, I was on an MTV show, War in the Ape, which was a kind of Curb Your Enthusiasm style. And you're the lead on that show, right? You and the ape? Yeah, so I'm the lead human. And so there they just wrote out, there was like script mints. And a script mint is where they would write what happens in each scene, but not the dialogue is in there. So you get to create that, so that's kind of... Now, would you rehearse that and come up with stuff, or would you, they start rolling and then you guys would just figure it out? Um, they would, I and mean, they had basic an idea, and I think me and Warren, who was the ape, who was a puppet, we're both really good at that together where we would, sometimes you'd have a camera rehearsal so the camera knows what it's doing and we know where the camera's going. And we would kind of have like an idea of what we're doing, but then after doing it multiple times, like, ooh, that was good. What if we get to that quicker? Or like, ooh, this was funny. Or some, and sometimes I would, in the, they would have certain one lines that I had to hit. Like uh, everything I we say, I can make up, but some of it, like, but make sure you say this because that's going to drive the plot forward to the next one. And War in the Eight is my favorite show of all the things I've done, but it's not that well known. It's only available on Amazon and iTunes, but it's not, I wish it was on Prime where it was for free, but it's one of the Why is it your favorite show? Um, I got to work with puppets, uh, which yeah. was really fun. Um, I was a lead and it was, I loved getting the comedy of it. And it was, and I made, I made, I made I made great friends on the show. It was just so fun to do. And I got to be the assistant. My character was the assistant to a monkey puppet <laughs> who was addicted to drugs, sex, and alcohol. And um, I actually became real friends with this puppet, which was fascinating. So even though, uh, let's say Andy here, he's a puppet, but there would be someone under this table controlling him. I didn't pay attention to the man under the table. I just talked 
So this guy, he was very real and he was so wonderful. Dan Milano, he was so fantastic that he made Warren very real to me. And I had a, one relationship with Warren, like on camera, then another, like off camera, like when we were in between the scenes, like I would still just talk to him, like he's my co-actor. And then after the show ended, I, actually, I became friends with the actual man <laughs> on, underneath the table. <laughs> Do you get uh, nervous going into auditions? Sure. Um, you I think it's, I was not so much nervous, but it's, well, sometimes it's like, oh, I want this. And like, you're unemployed. At, you're like, this would be really great to get, which actually is, I'm going to tell you, this is interesting. And I don't know um, if this is helpful or not. Um, so when I auditioned for this War in the Ape, which was my favorite show, I was already doing Glee at the time. Glee season one. It was Glee season one. Glee at the time was the biggest thing in the world. This puppet show, War in the Ape, was MTV, and that's the same network as Jersey Shore. I didn't give a crap about this audition. I was like, oh. well, is this some junk on MTV? And I I really couldn't care. And I feel bad, that's the truth. I wasn't that interested. And then, of course, I get it, and it becomes my favorite thing. And they, people say, Tell me if you want it, if you're, so, if you're really hungry, they and, they get, and they sense that you want it. And it's like, Ah, so like if I have something where I'm auditioning for the Muppets or some dream job, how do you not want show it. that? How do you not want that? So it's really so I don't know, but so that one that I got, so like, ah, do you I turn down auditions? That. I'm not doing that. I don't want to do that. Um, not often. There was I think my first audition I had a, that I turned down was at a skateboard, and that's skateboarding is where you're, you're standing on a board on wheels. That's terrifying. I couldn't do it. I'm not. Do you, do you know? That's is that terrible. Does that scare you? So imagine like you're. Um, there's wheels on this, uh, like, and you're just you're, you're standing. What was it for? What commercial? I don't remember. But it was like, no, no, that's it, huh? Could you skateboard? I would go. I would go on the audition. No, I was too scary. Right. Uh, the other thing, I did a short film where they wanted me to smoke a cigarette, and. I think it was... But they usually have fake cigarettes. I, don't, usually like, I, would, I think it was, I don't know if it was fake or real. I tried it for one take. It was the most disgusting <laughs> thing in the world. And I realized, no. And I and this was 2006. This was only my second year here. This is February 2006. It's a film for the American Film Institute. And yeah, but you've already booked so much by your second year here. How, in 14 commercials, how many shows did you do? No, no, other than the Tom Green one. Oh, and I also did a play at the Amundsen Theater, which is uh, like a two, two or three thousand seat theater, which is my first time. But I got paid for theater, um, and that was like for four months with a lot of like big actors in it. So, so when did you get into the union? When did you get into SAG? I got into SAG from one, some of my commercials. I think that's got me SAG eligible. Are you still with the same uh, commercial agent? I am not with the same initial commercial agent, um, but I'm with the same everyone else. Okay. And, when and, well, and I'll tell you this: why I'm not with the same initial commercial agent, even though I got 14 commercials with them, and it goes back to his story of the waitress who wasn't great. I just didn't find them friendly on the phone, mm. and I got I was doing 14 commercials, and they. And I, I forget what it was, but I called about some. Eh, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. But it's no, like, no, that, I think it's that's like important. Yeah, people. It's like I and I never. I'm with all the same people. I know I don't want to like switch teams and constantly be. You know, oh, I'm going to switch to some better, or bigger, or blah blah blah. It's like you know, I like what I'm working with, but it's like I am like how I, I didn't feel I was respected over the phone. So when did you get your agent? You're um, not not your commercial agent. Your but with my theatrical, which is my film and TV agent, I got that in. Maybe like September or October 2005. And how? Uh, from my manager. My manager set that up and they invited them to see the play I was in at the Amundsen Theater, um, which was a play that I was the lead role in. We filmed the, out in that play. It was called Dead End, which took place in like Depression Era New York. And they filmed the, they filled the orchestra pit with 10,000 gallons of water to simulate the East River. And we were actually swimming on stage every night. Yeah. And like an opening night, William Shatner was there, and Don De Luis was in the audience, and it's, um, it's like maybe Betty White or there was a lot of people that were big celebrities, and it was so wow, and they're watching me on stage. So that was when I had my first rehearsals for that, and 
because I've done theater for, you know, 100, 200, whatever, but this is thousands. And I miss, that's the last time I've done a play. So I went from doing several plays a year, moving here, um, doing a huge play my first year. I haven't done a play since, and I miss it. So now beyond acting, do you write? Do you direct? What, what else do you have going Well, I think whenever you, make, like, you do a social media video, or like a TikTok or YouTube or Instagram, that is a form of directing. I think that's absolutely directing, and I do like doing that. And I have some of my own projects that I'm trying to like get off the ground and create and you know it's always everything is difficult but I'm working and pushing and trying to make it happen all right so before we go what do you uh what do you want to tell everybody that that uh nobody knows or nobody's asked you yet what's you have anything that you'd like to like people to know oh well, they probably hopefully already know it I'm gonna tell you what's be nice to people um everyone is going through something and it's, it's so simple just be nice to people Treat people with kindness. And I, I'm always surprised when I see people who don't do it. It's so easy to be nice. Why so wouldn't, yeah. Sorry. Is that what you're looking for? That's, is that, I don't know. <laughs> is that you? Yeah. Um, well, what else? Advice. But I guess uh, this is the point. I guess we're wrapping it up because he, whoa, we're at 56 minutes. Yeah. We've been a while. Uh, what are you working on now? What's the next big thing? You were just on Mr. Mayor with Ted Danson, and yes. like I said, but that's no longer. That's no longer, but I got to do five episodes of that. Right. And that was fun. And um, Andy's actually been inspiring me to post more on YouTube, which would make me a YouTuber. Yeah, let's get it. I mean, you have a lot of, you were doing pranks and stuff a while back on YouTube, some funny stuff. It's just hidden camera pranks, and which I think people used to like, and I don't know if that genre has died but i feel like people have become more sensitive and i know like, it's not as popular that genre but i have fun doing that it's like so fun when there's like a hidden camera and you have a wireless mic and just interacting with people so where can so i find you on youtube um i think it's youtube.com slash jolly joshua or but if you just search my name josh sussman i think it'll take you to my page so and we'll, we'll link it below yeah so the link is gonna be oh that looks like i'm pointing to um, no, um, but also, and you have a big TikTok, right? Um, you, you got a lot of TikTok followers. I'm on TikTok, it's Mr. Josh Sussman, M R J O S H S U S S M A N, with the verified check mark. So you'll know that it's me. Like if you see Mr. Josh Sussman one, which I think someone created that they put the same profile picture, it's not me. That was me. Why? <laughs> that was really no. <laughs> no. Um. Okay, I'm glad. At Instagram, it's the same name as TikTok, Mr. Josh Sussman. Twitter, it's Josh Sussman, no Mr. I honestly wish I could be Josh Sussman everywhere, but that was taken, so I'm on Mr. Uh, Facebook, I'm Mr. Josh Sussman, Facebook.com. Do you got, you got any last uh, acting advice for everybody here? They want to be an actor? What do you suggest, other than be nice? Okay, yeah. Be okay. nice and be prepared. Yeah, if you want to be an actor, watch lots of film. Know what's out there. Know what's current. Know what parts you would... I want to do don't be afraid to take something small like i've had on so many different shows also where i was hired for just one episode and it has become more than one episode i think the and that's because of you you think your personality how you perform people like you whatever it is it's i was well when i took that one episode there is no promise or guarantee of more but i and it's happened there, a lot because there's no ego i could i'll tell you how many times Drake and Josh was one episode I've done two. Wizards of Waverly Place was one episode I did eight. What About Brian was one episode I did three. Fish Hooks was one episode I did 26. Glee, one episode I've done 21 episodes of Glee. Wow. Mr. Mayor, one episode I've done five. Um, Star vs. the Forces of Evil, one episode I've done seven. Glitch Hex, I hired for one episode, I did nine. So, uh, and there might even be more, but that's a lot of things where I was just hired for one. So, don't be afraid to do something small because if you, if it's really what you want to do, you'll be happy just to be on set. You'll be happy to just be there. And if, and if people, they, they'll see something and they'll be like, oh, we want more of this individual. And Jessica Mendoza agrees. Thanks, Jess. Yeah, thank you, Jessica. Well, thanks, everybody. Uh, we thank hope you. this was of uh, some value to you guys at least entertained right and learn something from jolly josh did you like it we're gonna do it again josh okay when we have something else to talk about okay what do we want to talk about next i don't know we could talk about our favorite 
I think we should I review movies. What do you think if we start reviewing movies? Okay. Um, let's um, review a movie. Or have you actually Obi-Wan from Obi-Wan? Yeah. What do you think? I think we should talk about that later. Okay, a goth camera. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, well, I, I was, thank you everyone who joined us. Thanks for joining. And thank you to the people who joined us who are not live when you're watching this after. Like, I, I acknowledge you too. Yeah. I see you, and I know you exist, and you matter. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. Da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da.